Okay then, we have a few moves to go through in the Overwatch League, actually two moves to be precise. One of these was on the tail end of the video yesterday that I didn't include, and then one of them came in a lot, lot later, which was impossible for me to include because I'd already recorded this video and edited it and everything. Uh, this video? The last video. And so, yeah, that was, that was a big problematic thing. So we're going to catch up with it today. And today, we are looking, first of all, at the Houston Outlaws. The Houston Outlaws, this has been rumored for a long time, but this finally has now been announced. This is them signing Juby. Now, Juby, this is a, a very big step for, for the Overwatch League, because this is the first player to come from an academy, a, a college team. So, this is coming from a level of Overwatch below not only Tier 2, which is Contenders, but Tier 3, which is, in my opinion, Contenders Trials and things like that. This is coming from Open Division level, basically. Uh, the college level of Overwatch. And this is a super interesting move. Super interesting move. Although, Juby has had time... Uh, things like Wave Check and Simplicity and Saints and Second Wind. But nothing to... Nothing to pop off. Let's say that. And Triumph back in the day as well. So, he's coming into the Houston Outlaws as a, uh, a support. He plays the Batiste, Mercy and Lucio... He's currently age 17. He will turn 18 on April the 4th. So, he's only just going to squeak in. He's only just going to squeak in. So, he's currently inactive on the roster, but he will be active time when the league starts. And this, it's an interesting move. It's clearly a de developmental move for the Houston Outlaws. He's coming in alongside the other supports of Crimzo. Uh, actually, I say the other supports. It's just Crimzo. It's just Crimzo. So, do I expect Juby to start alongside Crimzo? being Crimzo the flex support that he is of the Houston Outlaws. I would hope not. No offense to Juby, but I don't think he's the great option. Also, still not cleared up whether they are actually keeping Boink or not. Um are they Are they gonna keep Boink and then use him to bring up Juby? That I mean it's an option. His, his hero ball is exactly the same. And it makes me think that he Houston Outlaws is going to keep hold of Boink and use him alongside Juby. And then Juby's going to become the the next successor to Boink. Um, if that's the case, I really have my doubts about the Houston Outlaws support line in this coming season. It's a Frankenstein team because it's got some really lovely parts. It's got Dante, it's got Happy, it's got, uh, I mean, KSF's okay. Uh, it's got a decent tank line, nothing special, like a Piggy and Jangu, but it's okay. And then you look at the supports, it's like, Crimzo, Juby, and Boink. Like, in my opinion, that's a low, that's a low level. That's a low level support line for Overwatch League. So, it leaves, uh, it leaves a bad taste in the mouth. And this was a season where we thought the Houston Outlaws was going somewhere. And when we saw the happy transfer, we were like, ooh, hello, happy and Dante. Oh, that's a DPS line right there. But now it's like, oh, well, okay, I guess that's lovely. Um, I'm not expecting Houston Outlaws to improve much from this. And I actually think from a solo point of happy, him going from Guangzhou Charge to the Houston Outlaws. Now, obviously, um, you know, I think that's a downgrade. I really do think that's a downgrade. And so I think that's really unfortunate for him. I don't like the moves that Houston Outlaws are making in the support line. And so, yeah, I'm going to... We're going to gloss over that. <laughs> anyway, moving over to the Toronto Defiant now. Where we are going to take a look at their signing. They have signed yet another player. Uh, this is another young player, 17 years old. Will turn 18 on January the 20th. He's coming in from T1 in Korea. T1 used to be Fusion University. And this team used to be, this player used to be on that Fusion Uni team when they used to dominate the North East America and North America contenders scenes. And Fusion Uni, they also won the Atlantic Showdown way back when. Uh, but then they moved over, T1 took them over to the uh, Korean region and Neist followed them. This is Neist. So, Neist. Uh, or Neist, Neist, Neist. I presume it's Neist because it changes the I to a 1. He's coming in for the Toronto Defiant. He is going to be their flex DPS, their projectile DPS, the Genji Tracer Farah. Uh, may echo, although the Tracer is not necessarily uh, the not necessarily projectile. 
it's I, I don't I don't mind the move. I think it's a good development de developmental mood move. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, he's the he's the only out and out flex they've got. When you look at the other DPS that the that the uh, Toronto Defiant have got, they've got Hisu and they've got Logics. Um, so they don't fill any of those roles. So Nice is clearly going to fill those roles unless the Defiant decide to bring in another DPS player. Which in this current climate, with this current uh, the the current off season and stuff like that, I don't think so. I think this might be the last signing for the Defiant. If so, though, this does round out a full Korean lineup possibly for the Toronto Defiant with Aztec and Sun J, Sado, Hisu, Michelle, and Neist. With Beast and Logix being on the bench, this is what I would expect from the Toronto Defiant going into 2021. Which means we're looking at a DPS side of Hisu and Neist. I don't think that's that bad. It's not world beating. But I still think it's good, and it's a, it's a DPS line that will get you top 10, given the right coaching. Plus they've got Sado, who was a Grand Finals uh, tank player last year. Michelle was a Grand Finals tank player last year, although he didn't get played too much on the Soul Dynasty. And Sun Jae is a really nice main support, and Aztec, well he's he's a Korean contender's winner with WGS Phoenix. And he really did shine against Runaway in that final. So. I really like that lineup. I don't think it's going to be uh, a title contending lineup, but when I look at the Florida Mayhem, I'm thinking Toronto are competing with that right now. When I look at teams like Hangzhou Spark, I'm looking at Toronto and I'm thinking they're competing with that right now. So I think there's, there's possibly a lot of potential in this Toronto, to Toronto lineup. The biggest thing that holds me back about Toronto is the fact that they brought in KDG. Now, KDG is a great coach, right? Whatever. But he was... Uh, yeah. He was at Fusion. What can I say? And look at what happened to Fusion in the Grand Finals. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It wasn't pretty, was it? I mean, it could be... I mean, before that, it was at the Soul Dynasty. And yeah, I mean, they were nothing to write home about either. So... Although he did well in the regular season with the, the Philadelphia Fusion, when it actually mattered, he came up short. However, when it comes to Toronto Defiant, you've got to be taking baby steps. And this is what I was talking about with uh, some other teams last season. Actually, Paris Eternal was one of them, and look how that went. But um, some teams will go through a two-year building period to build a roster that they think can compete for a championship. And this could be the start of that, especially in these current climates where money is actually quite tight for these teams. So, with Toronto Defiant, I think this could be a longer term project. When you look at the age of Nice and Aztec, etc, it could be a long term project. And so, they could be looking at, say, top 10 this year, and then they add a few more parts uh, next year, in the offseason, and all of a sudden you're looking at top 5, or you're looking at championship contenders. So, I think... That's possibly the route Toronto are going down, and it's a longer building project. If it is, I really like it. I really like it. It's a promising Toronto Defiant lineup, and I think it's one of the best they've ever had, if not the best they've ever had. And so, it's it's a bright time to be a Toronto Defiant fan. And I hope the Toronto Defiant fans do actually get a little bit of, um, not hype, but they finally get a little bit of stuff to look forward to. But like Dallas, um, two teams that really haven't looked forward to too much in these past few seasons but hopefully now they can step forward and have a good time of it at least with some teams perhaps not being as strong as others uh, or as they were last season when you look at the likes of philadelphia fusion and shanghai dragons they're not looking as powerful as they were in my opinion still powerful though still mighty powerful and then you've got other teams coming up like dallas like toronto florida not looking too bad now either and then we wait to see what new york uh, will do after their signing of bianca and yakpong but I've got a video coming up on the regions as well, so stay tuned for that. Hit the bell, whatever, to make sure you get the notification of that coming through, blah, 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 YouTube things. And then uh, I will be back tomorrow with the next video, and then the video after that video that, check out Illusion Gaming, because they're going up with highlights and matches as well from the Illusion X and other teams coming up soon. There'll be more announcements around those teams coming soon as well on Twitter, so stay tuned for that. It's all linked in the video description, but for now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you'd like to give a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. See you then.